joins us live from there now. Dan, uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Tell us about the visit to Murr Island, though. This must have been quite a moment for the locals and I guess so many others to see a serving Prime Minister visit this grave. David, good afternoon. Well, you got that great sense that this was a special occasion, not just for the Prime Minister and for his, for his team, but also for the locals, people who had come from far and wide. Uh, I spoke to one lady who had come from as uh, far as an island that was several hours by boat away for the occasion of seeing a Prime Minister up close. And we saw the Prime Minister arriving with a great sense of fanfare, with those warrior Merian dancers uh, ushering him onto their land and really welcoming him before he made that pilgrimage to the site where Australia's greatest land rights champion, Eddie Mabo, is now laid. His daughter thanking the Prime Minister for making this special trip. Here's a little of what Gail Mabo had to say. This is a space which is very spiritual. It is spiritual in the sense that this is where he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And this is the space that he was fighting for. Mm -hmm. And with that, you know, I thank you for coming. Thank you, Gail. Thank I thank you. you for taking time out to come to visit my father. And David, as Miss Marbo said, this site of Murr Island it was a very spiritual and significant place for Eddie Marbo, as well as for many, many Merriam people. In fact, around that grave were the graves of warriors from generations and generations gone by, a fitting place, many thought, for him to be buried. Of course, coming after that monumental struggle for land rights that led up to the 1992 overturning of the concept of terra nullius by the High Court, forever changing the way Australia view Indigenous and when it comes to land ownership. Here's what the Prime Minister had to say about that component of his visit. This was a warrior, uh, not simply a strong man uh, physically, but a strong man culturally and spiritually who decided that uh, he would take on the legal establishment, uh, he would take on the previously settled view of Australian law. David, not far from where I'm standing, the opposition leader Bill Shorten is in Cairns meeting with some traditional owners where he's also spent some time uh, with Eddie Marbo's uh, widow, Bonita Marbo, and here's his weighing in to today's historic visit. I'm actually pleased that Tony Abbott uh, has visited Eddie Marbo's grave. I think hopefully this shows a maturing in Mr Abbott's views from uh, 20 years ago when he said that Mabo was dividing, he meant the decision, the Mabo decision was uh, dividing Australia. So David, politics is never far from this debate or, or what we're seeing here, but there has been another conversation that's really been taking hold on the Torres Straits at the beginning of the Prime Minister's visit, and that's around constitutional recognition of First Australians. Gail, Gail Marbo said that the fight that her father led of land rights is simply the first step. The second is constitutional recognition. The Prime Minister, as you know, has, has been in some hot water over his position, particularly that letter that he sent to Indigenous leaders saying that he wouldn't be supporting an Indigenous constitutional process because he was worried that there would be a, quote, log of claims. I asked him about that. Here's what he had to say. Uh, inevitably, uh, because this is a subject about which people feel passionately, uh, there is going to be um, some people who go off in this path, some people who go off on that path. The important thing is that eventually all the paths come together. That's the important thing, that eventually all the paths come together. And, and uh, I do think that the process is back on track, thanks to the discussions that I've had with a number of senior Indigenous leaders over the last couple of weeks. David, just one of the other significant debates that's happening, of course, lots of conversations happening already and are expected right across this week about the issues facing the lives of first Australians. And we'll be hearing a lot more from the Prime Minister over the coming days as he continues his running of government from here in the Torres Strait. Back to you. Dan, it's going to be a very interesting week up there, I know. And uh, I look forward to talking to you throughout it as we see um, how the Prime Minister goes there. Thursday Island, elsewhere in the Torres Strait. Thanks very much for that quick break.